Spock's brother, uh, 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 who 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 said that he was looking for Shangri La, and he hijacked uh, the Enterprise to go to Shangri La. When he got there, he got something totally different than what he thought he was going to get. Lord have mercy. When you seek God, you have to seek Him with your whole heart, and then He will be found if you are seeking Him. Lord have mercy. I'm back in um, Isaiah 58, uh, 55. Uh, 55 9 for as the heavens are higher than the earth and 10 for as the rain and snow come down from the heavens and return not there again but water the earth and make it bring forth and sprout that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater here's the key verse so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth it shall not return to me void without producing any effect useless but it shall accomplish that which i please and purpose and it shall prosper in the thing for which i sent it that's why god told uh, told me today to sound the alarm because he had a there is a word from the Lord for this day. It is a rhema word. It is a fresh word, and God's people need to hear this and know this. When I say God's people, uh, normally people will say, "Well, you got to be preaching to the sinner, the unbeliever." No, I am not. I am preaching to the church, the church of Zion, God's people, Jacob. Israel of today, Jerusalem of today, I am preaching to you, I'm preaching to me. We need to hear what the Lord is saying right now, uh, hear what the Spirit is saying to each and every one of us, and that's why we're crying loud and we're sparing not. We're blowing the trumpet, we're sounding the alarm. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, let me move on. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is such a fast of yours what I have chosen, a day for man to humble himself with sorrow in his soul? Is true fasting merely mechanical? Some of us got a mechanical way that we worship God. We do things by the numbers. Oh my God, here we go in the churches. Uh, we got the program. We follow the program. This is what we do every Sunday. We got the same program. We may stick in a person's name here or there, but we have the program. Let me tell you this. You have no program outside of the Holy Spirit. That if the Holy Spirit is not present in your worship, your worship is in vain. And you need to let go and let God and let the Spirit of the living God run the service. Now, am I talking about not, uh, doing things out of control or anything like that? No, absolutely not. God is a God of order. But his order is that we have to first off acknowledge him. In the service and let him have his way in the service as the Holy Spirit moves. Guess and then know this. He will not do anything that's going to bring conflict with his own self. He's not going to do that. But he absolutely needs to be the one that's in charge of the service. There is no service without him. Jesus Christ is the author and the finisher of our faith. We have no faith without him. We have no worship without him and his Holy Spirit. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Oh, let's move on. Rather, rather, is not the fast, is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the bands of the of the yoke? To let the oppressed go free that you should break every enslaving yoke. That's the fast that God has called. The purpose of a service, a worship service in, in, in our churches should be not to come and have folks show up to see what the entertainment is going to be for the day. Or to see how the preacher is going to preach the day if, if it's my favorite preacher. Oh my God, are they going to hoop? Ah, well, ah, yeah. Are they going to do a little bit of that? Ah, are they going to be some singing from the choir? Oh, let the choir sing. No, what should be done is that you should come to hear the word of God so that the word of God can do what it's designed to do. God sent forth his words to heal. God sent forth his word to deliver. God sent forth his word to make whole. And if there's none of that going on in your worship service, then your worship service is in vain. Why? Because God is not in the midst of that. His word is not accomplishing what it should be. The service, the worship service is not accomplishing what it should be. First off, it should be giving reverence to him. Amen. And because we give reverence to him, then he will do what he will do on our behalf. Amen. Lord have mercy. Moving on. Is it not to divide your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, 
that you cover him and that you hide not yourself from the needs of your own flesh and blood. Let's go back to this. Uh, is it, it, it got, this is God again speaking to us about what, what he requires us to do. Amen. What, what the fast is all about, what the Sabbath day is all about, what worship is all about. Amen. Remember what I said when I, when I said that God expects us to operate in a selfless mode. Uh, here is the example of this. Is it not to divide your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? That's selfless. That's selfless. And, 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 and when you see the naked, when you see the naked, that you cover him. And that you hide not yourself from the needs of your own flesh and blood. Lord have mercy. Many of us, many of us so-called do good and Christian folk, uh, believers in Christ. We're not following what the word of God says because we see many people out there that, that, that are in need. We see many people that have, uh, uh, that need the things that we can provide for them, but we don't do it. We will not do it. We'll sit around there and we'll act like what happened with that good Samaritan. Oh my God. When the man was on the way to Jericho and, on, and he ran into some thieves on the road and they beat him near death. They left him for dead on the side of the road of Jericho. Jericho was a road that nobody needed to been traveling. No how and the man should not have been out there by himself but he was and unfortunately he got taken advantage of but then three people came along one was a priest and one was a levite a priest a levite and a samaritan the priest went and and, and the priest looked over on from the side of the road from where he was saw the man over there crossed over saw the man and crossed back and kept on stepping so did the Levite looked upon came, looked on the man, crossed back over to the road and kept on stepping. But then there was a Samaritan, a, a mixed Jew, a hated. There was two people that the, in, uh, that the Jewish people flat out hated. They straight, straight up hated them. The Samaritans, the mixed Jews, you know, a mutt uh, 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 for a dog, y'all. Uh -huh, um, the mixed Jews and they also hated a public and a tax collector that's still today people don't like people don't like uh, 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 tax collectors today matter of fact there's certain parts of the country in, in the United States of America in the Appalachian regions if you go around there you happen to represent the United States of American government and you happen to be like the IRS internal revenue service they call them revenueers you might walk away from there with some buck shot up your butt because them folks do not like no tax collectors uh huh and, and, and mixed Jews mixed Jews people don't like people of mixed race to this day Lord have mercy Lord have mercy. I don't know why they had to get together. Hey, we supposed to keep the races among blacks among blacks, white among white. Oh, Lord have mercy. Everybody on this face of this planet is a mixture of somebody else. There is no pure bred race on this planet. None. Lord have mercy. Let me move on. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and then, then remember what Jesus don't you remember what happened um, when God had this occasion? He had goats on his left. He had sheep on the right. And there was something that was said like this. When I was hungered, did you feed me? When I was naked, did you clothe me? When I was sick and in prison, did you visit me? The goats answered, when did we ever see you like that, Lord? Well, when you've done it unto the least of these, you've done it unto me. The goats went to hell. The sheep, same question. When I was naked, did you clothe me? When I was uh, hungry, did you feed me? When I was sick and in prison, did you visit me? When did we ever see you that way? When you've done it unto the least of these, you've done it unto me. Apparently, they've done it unto the least of these. And so should we. Because here's a key right here, y'all. This is why I said about the being selfless. And that has to be a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ for this to happen. Because this is what happened here when you read that scripture. It said this, Lord have mercy. Is it not to divide your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? 
when you see the naked, not when somebody comes to you and say, you know, sir, ma'am, I wonder if you can help me. I don't have no clothes. You can see I don't have no clothes and I need to, I need about a couple of dollars. I need some clothes or something. Could you, could you help me out? Yeah. Uh, I, and you see somebody sitting on the side, they're digging into the garbage or whatever, trying to get some food. You don't sit around there waiting and, and, and for them to come to you and say, sir, madam, I need some food. Could you help me out? The Bible says when you see. And why is that so significant? Because the Lord Jesus Christ, we are examples of him. Those that are in the body of Christ, we are ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ. We represent him. And when you represent him, you need to represent him in the spirit of excellence as he represented the father when he came. Jesus Christ said this when he came. I came to do the will of the one that sent me, the father in heaven. Whatever he tells me to do, that's what I do. I don't do anything outside of him. We should be doing the will of the Father, the will of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because what did he do? He sacrificed himself when we needed him the most. The Bible says that Romans 5, 8, that God commended his great love for us. That while we were still sinners, Christ, the anointed, the Messiah, died for us. He did not wait for us. He died for us. And let me let me just say something. Let me go to another passage of scripture. And read that real quick, fast, in a hurry. Let's go to Philippians. Amen. The second chapter. And I'm going to pick it up at that fifth verse. I've already read something. I've already spoke something to your hearing from Philippians that you've heard me say. Uh, uh, so when you hear this word, you'll see where it comes from. Amen. This is why you have to study to show yourselves approved. It's one thing for you to sit and listen to me uh, uh, give you scripture, but you really need to know this for yourself. Amen. This is how you learn. This is how you grow. I can absolutely attest to that because um, one of the things that I'm assured of when God brought me into salvation, he took me to the right place. He took me to a Bible believing teaching church. I'm not glorifying my, uh, my father and mother in the ministry, but I'm giving honor to whom honor is due. And I was taught extremely well and I've still been taught by them and nurtured by them. And here's something that my mom in the ministry, Pastor Reverend Evangelist Yvette Lane Maxfield would always say anytime that I was trying to give an explanation about something from the word of God or whatever. And I know she said it to me and she said it to everybody else, but I'm speaking about what she told me. She would always say, where can I find that in the word, in the word, in the Bible, baby? Where can I find that in the Bible, baby? Philippians 2, um, the uh, second chapter, the fifth verse read this way. Let the same attitude and purpose and humble mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Let him be your example in humility. Who, although being, now watch this, being essentially one with God and in the form of God, possessing the fullness of the attributes which make God God, did not think this equality with God was a thing to be eagerly grasped or retained. But guess what he did? But stripped himself. Of all privileges and rightful dignity, so as to assume the guise of a servant, slave, and that he became like men and was born a human being. That was a choice that Jesus Christ made for himself. We didn't ask him. We did not ask him. And after, and after he had appeared in human form, he abased and humbled himself still further and carried his obedience to the extreme of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, because he stooped so low, God has highly exalted him and has freely bestowed on him the name that is above every name. So when you do what you do for the Lord Jesus Christ and you do it with the right mindset, with the right heart, God will reward you. Uh-huh. Uh, us Asaph, we don't have to worry about no prosperity of the wicked because when I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ, my reward is on high. But understand this. Anytime the Lord blesses me spiritually and elevates me spiritually, he's a God of balance and he will balance it out with natural blessings. I am a full recipient of that. I have had that happen to me. My testimony is true. If anybody want to know my testimony. Mm -mm -mm. Lord have mercy. I'm moving on. I'm I'm almost done, y'all. Lord have mercy. I thank God for his word. I thank God for the message today on Sound the Alarm. I want you to know and, and understand this about me, and this is the workings of God, and this is why I'm saying this. As I'm speaking to you right now, all I have before me is my Bible. 
And, 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 and the reason being is because I trust God explicitly. I trust the Holy Ghost explicitly. When he gives me a message, I go over the scriptures to make sure that everything that is there that needs to be there, that he would have me to say. And then I pray, I anoint myself, um, and, and I ask God to order my steps in his word, and I open up my mouth and out.